On the surface, it looks like a real blood fest, but there's some depth to the characters there, like the death row right Yeah! Awesome! It's just like, wow! <laughs> Included, see the bodyguard starring Kevin Costner and Whitney Houston for only $7.20. Or sci fi thriller Fortress starring Christopher Lambert for only $7.20. Or any one of our great movies coming soon. Any session, day or night for just. A lot of people think Death Road Rider, it, they take it at surface value, you know, they think it's, it's just this, this, this cheap, low-budget, cocaine fueled Mad Max knockoff that was written in a month as a tax dodge. And while most of those things are, of course, true, it, it was uh, heavily inspired by Mad Max, uh, Stone, similar films, it, it, it did have a, a shoestring budget, and yes, most of the cast and crew was on cocaine for the entire filming of the project. I think taking the insanity of Death Road Rider at just a surface level is a mistake. Because what we really see in Brimey Anders' vision is there is reason in her madness. By all regards, Death Road Rider should have been forgotten. The Australian film industry is no stranger to uh, low budget films that are poorly distributed and vanish without a trace. If it hadn't had the small budget to transfer onto VCR, it might have never been seen at all. Years ago, it was in a little rental place in the south of Mexico City. It was dubbed into Spanish and had subtitles in English. But that's the only one I've been able to find. I got to see it in the cinema. Oh, fantastic. Just a uh, small cinema that just showed unusual movies. But the movie was shown in Chinese. A lot of the story and the rest of it was quite a mystery until we found some uh, bootleg copies on the internet. We found this, this, this VHS tape that he got like a bargain bit of, of um, uh, a blockbuster, um, he said. And um, he was like, oh guys, you've got to see this thing. It's the most hilarious thing you've ever seen. Yeah, yeah our, well, our, our, you know, our VHS is getting it, worn out. Yeah, died. everyone's is, yeah. Died, so. I've never actually uh, seen the movie Death Row Rider. But, like, I've heard that it's just absolutely awesome. I was talking to a relative of a friend of somebody that actually has seen it, and it's just like, oh my god, I have so got to find out more about this. It's just like, wow! <laughs> a couple of years ago, the parents left me at home alone and just decided to go searching because I was bored, find something to do or watch. Found a CD, put it on. Oh, it just was amazing. And I was a bit young, but my dad loved it. We actually, um, that was like the first film we bonded over. Right? Oh. Like he, my dad loves it. Like yep. he loves it. Some have even said that there's a, some sort of curse over the film. It was uh, plagued by disaster on set. There was the terrible fire that destroyed all the copies. There was the terrifying death of Mike Mulcahy, um, which many still consider an unsolved mystery. It was no surprise that uh, Brian Anders would later disavow the film as a, as a disaster. I think that Anders was, was so overwhelmed with the, 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 the realization of her vision that the infamous uh, uh, drug-fueled party that, that destroyed the tapes um, was her way of sort of regulating the message. It added to the mystique and when those other tapes were, were, were found a, a few years later, of course, um, that sort of, it brought her message to light in a way that never would have happened if it had had that sort of big budget theatrical release that, that films like Mad Max enjoyed. The truth is that it's actually very hard to find out a lot of information about the film itself. Um, we've contacted um, the Anders estate, but they refused to talk about the film. Similar reaction from some of the other stars who've now gone on to bigger things, whose names we won't mention and whose images we can't show. Principal photography began on the film in uh, February of 1990, and it was actually a very quick shoot. Uh, it only took about four months, and that includes the three-week break uh, when Mulcahy was in hospital for a drug overdose, and the two-week break uh, when the set uh, caught fire for the first time. Uh, most of the film was shot in Ipswich, 
um, in Queensland. I'm going to show you some of the sites up there where that was actually filming took place. We're also, of course, going to go to some of the shooting places here in Sydney. We're going to talk to some of the fans, um, obviously here in Sydney and around Australia. As well. These days, mostly my connection with the film is running the forums. I inherited that job from Psyche. Psyche is actually an American fan, um, and she was one of the first Americans uh, to sort of connect to the Australian um, community. We think this is where the ghost hideout was, and we think through the um, doorway over there is where the other gang came flying through and started the big brawl that was you know, almost at the end of the movie. So that, that ramp up there is where is where the, the main fight the main fight starts. Yeah, they, they, they drive out that way. Now, of course, it, it, I mean, you know, there's. That's a train station on the other side of that, but you can't see that in the movie. You know, in the movie, it just seamlessly, completely seamlessly goes into the harbour scene. A lot of the Americans and Europeans, they get still confused about where it was filmed because the, the landscape is not like anything they've got at home. And whereas some of us can go, oh yeah, I went on a school trip and went past that place. That's the same place. I think one of the understated characters which added a lot of character to the movie was the Tinker. My favourite character is the Queen of the Harpies. Um, so what do you think about her death scene? Um, I have to admit, I kind of expected it. There was no way they were going to let a character like that to live. Yeah. yeah. Tarantino's actually said on his blog that it's one of the movies that inspired him. I think the whole Avengers, I think the whole Marvel Universe, I think if it wasn't for Death Road Rider there wouldn't be an MCU. That came <laughs> out. The freaking comics no, came out can... before you asked. There, no, but there are scenes. There are scenes from those movies. I'm not into the cosplay and the rest of it, but the movie has such subtlety in it, in the middle of something that people just look at and say, oh, that's just a bloodthirsty fight. But of course they're not looking at the subtlety. It, you know, on the surface it looks like a real bloodthirst, but there's some depth to the characters there, like the ghosts, you know, they're not just mad, they're, they're they're completely sane people in a mad world. Those, those are the things that, you know, separate a Hollywood blockbuster from a cult film. The fights with Bokken are the most interesting. He's just stand there yep. and just lean slightly forward so you think he's defenceless. And you come in with a headshot on him, which is what one of the, uh, the team of the Ghost Gang did. Yep. And he just leans back, it misses, and by the time the other guy realises, He's had his eye taken out. That's all with the bucket. And while the big main punch fight is going on, there is one of the best choreographed, cleanest knife fights I have ever seen in my life. It's not like, you know, when you're a jet, you're a jet all the way. These people actually knew what they were doing. Um, and it's like, if, if I could get a decent copy that's not too badly fussed out, I would love to go in and try to recreate that fight. Because first it's, you know, first it's knives, then one of the guys grabs a, a, a tablecloth off the table and actually starts using it like you would have used it if you were doing like the sort of old civilian knife and cape style. I, 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 that is a rabbit hole that I want to go down that I have not been able to do as much as I want. Another abandoned set that you can find untouched since the filming in 991 is this run-down abandoned stadium in the west of Sydney. It's here that they shoot the, uh, the arena scene, which is obviously uh, a, a pastiche, a homage to the Ben-Hur chariot scene, except of course with motorcycles. Today I begin my journey to Melbourne, then on to Brisbane to meet the fans of Death Road Rider. <laughs> Uh, so have you guys heard of a film called Death Road Rider? It's, it came out in 991, it's an Australian film. No? I no, sorry. Never. No? What about you guys? Not at all. No? Okay. Heard this film? No? What was that? Yeah, that was great. Yeah. 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 Has ever made a cake uh, for Death Road Rider with any of those characters? It's called what? Death Road Rider. It was, the, it was a movie from the 90s. Yeah. 
No, I never made a take. No, I haven't. Yeah. Uh, have you ever filmed Death Road Rider? No. No? No? No. Okay. No? No. Uh, is it out yet? Death Road Rider. Yeah! Fucking yeah. awesome. Oh, what's her name? The, um. Jess the Valkyrie? Yes! Yes! yes. She was, and I, again, very young, yeah. but first crush. Oh, okay. So, it was, yeah, that was a sort of, oh, was a man, big deal. When she curb stomps that guy on the steel bar, <laughs> oh. I, oh, yeah. yeah. It's just, I'm just so excited to be, like, there's going to be people here at the con that, uh, they're, they're dressed up as, like, the same as me, and it's like, oh my god, I get to meet other people that are from Death Row Rider. And I've heard that somebody actually got some of the old merchandise, the old, like the, the uh, cigarettes packet and the lighter. It, it just touched so many people, like just, just hearing about it on the net and just finding out that there's actually a group and there's like a reunion type of thing for the anniversary of yep. it. Yep. I'm just so excited, it's like I can't talk. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's, it is 38, 39 degrees outside, a very hot day for uh, RiderCon 2016 here in Ipswich for the 25th anniversary of Death Road Rider. We're just waiting for the last few people to arrive. Um, they should be here any minute. Um, Hi. Uh, hello, hello, come in, come Hi. in. Hi. Hi. I'm Steve. Steve, I'm Bonnie. You probably hey. know me as Maniac Bonnie. Oh, oh my gosh. Hey, it's... Hey. Oh, oh. No, this was the uh, the American release, I think, on the VCR, and this one is the Australian one. Um, I think that was from that's from the Chinese one. That's terrible. The, yeah, that one's terrible. That's the Chinese book. That, that, yeah, that's sure. I was pretty young. It was back before I had my first child, yeah. and it was on Channel Four back in the UK. Oh, right in the UK, late yeah. Late night indie channel, and on came this movie. Yeah. And I gotta say, my life hasn't been the same since. It's it was everything Mad Max promised to be. I had this friend of mine who's forty years younger than me, he's a very avid filmmaker. And we got talking about uh, cinematography one day and I uh, commented about Japanese stuff. Anime. I love anime, but um he said, Look, did you ever hear about Jeff Road Rider? And Obviously when they're on their bikes the they're all made up with their, their goggles and yep. and their um, and their skull masks. And um, I did try riding the bike like that, but I, unfortunately I got pulled over because it's not actually legal. You yeah. have to have real crash helmets. Yeah, yeah. Um, they don't get. They just it. don't feel the fandom. Yeah. You know? It's a wonderful scene where he just starts playing trombone and you think what the hell you know there's this whole fight going on out inside of himself and he just gets it up there and suddenly boom he just goes like a bazooka you know this yeah. huge thing blasts down and then kills all of these guys you know <laughs> can, you, can you put that in for me we could try yeah okay cool yeah uh, uh I'm, I'm gareth um uh, i'm currently dressed as uh, uh doc jenkins yep um uh, obviously you know i haven't got quite the right goggles on and obviously i i, I will get more once i finish the the, the costume and properly do it yeah um uh did, is that is that yep, good? that's good hi and i'm bonnie i actually met mark and some of the crew here in ipswich when i was filming um and i followed them down to sydney i quit my job here and followed them on down to Sydney to just see what, what went with the film. Yeah. Um, it was great. I got to know a number of the people in the film cast yeah. very well. I believe you became quite uh, friendly with, with the lead star, Mark McKay. Um, Are you okay with this movie? Yeah, no, it's okay. It's okay. Yes, yeah, very friendly, you could say, over yeah. a number of years. Right. Um, so, you're, Doc Jenkins, your favourite character? Um, actually, no. Um, I'm, I'm a huge fan of the the, the, the tally maker, Yeah. Um, but I, I didn't want to steal. Didn't want to steal your thunder, mate. You, you, it's a great costume. I was very surprised when I discovered the movie and like found out that I lived in the Yeah. Everyone on the on everyone on the on the forum who thinks you're so lucky. Your mum and dad don't approve of your your. Uh... No, they actually banned custard in the house. 
The way the women in the film just, the power that they had, you know, and that's why I, I, I like to go, this, you know, one of the harpies. Because, you know, you just hear the sound of it. Yeah. You imagine them. If I could just mount this on my bike. That'd I be think that so would be so, so, yeah. so cool, you know. The sequel should concentrate on the harpies, I think. I think they were the most powerful part of the whole movie. Just because it was a start of like, was, they sort of started some kind of women's movement, you know. Because they had a soft side as well, you yep. know. They weren't out and out murderers, you know. They, they, they had sense to their violence, yep. you know. It got messy, you know. <laughs> it, was, it was a messy call. <laughs> So it's a bit of a hazard. Yeah, that's something. Yep, there it is. Always carry glue, gaffer tape, scissors. Um, this stuff you see, it'll fix anything. I it's fabric. Don't have any stitches to come apart. This is your stitches. Yep. Mom's banned it. Oh, very fun. Something about. Spending over a hundred dollars worth of custard in a day. You know that thing of custard? You think about it. Doctor Who just stole it later on. Yes! Yes! <laughs>
Wow. I think we turned around at the top of the hill. Like we, we actually went the wrong way. Look at this country though. Like this is so much part of the film. This red but I think, I think this is actually some of the residue of the set. I think I think this has obviously been a shrine. Like people have obviously been here as well, um, and taken care of it. I think that there's been a bushfire through here. I mean, look, that the steel is all collapsed in there. Yeah, but there were so many fires on set that could have happened during filming. Ooh, gives you the shivers, hey. Yeah. <laughs> close to an actual piece of the movie. Yeah. Oh, did, that, did they run that way? <laughs> I've got it now. Or did they, <laughs> or was it that way? Oh, what do you think? You I think they ran that way. To be fair though, we should probably like write to the council and let them know that it's here. We could put a, we could put a, um, some sort of historical marker. It but should be protected. We should, we should. Oh, I love that. I love that. You event. can kill us all, but you can't kill us. Guys, it happened here. Yeah. Right here, you know. Pretty close. Okay. There are these suburban houses all around here. People who are looking directly into that. Into How lucky this, is that? This iconic, you know, view, and they have no idea what. They've never what, seen the film. Yeah. If they if they watched the film, it would mean you know so much more. Yeah. All we have to do is present ourselves as serious, you know, hmm. authentic, yeah. um, caring people. Historians. You know, I would possibly take Historians. Off That's what we are. Yeah. Yeah. That's a very classic story. It's the you know it's the um, the hero's journey from reluctance through struggle. The true prize is not the custard itself, but rather the lesson that is learned along the way. If you go beneath the surface, it's a it's a metaphor for the state of society as it was in 1991. Not. Australian society, her adoptive homeland, nor even Norwegian society, which was, of course, the, the, the family, uh, the, the society that her mother's family was born into, but rather her father's side, which, of course, was Russian. And at the time in 1991, the Soviet Union was in its dying days. It would collapse uh, in, in, in the end of December. And, and at the time, there was a real undercurrent in Russian society that may be that the road they were on was leading to the death of their nation, that are all riding this death road, unable to look back. God, that movie, honestly, should be now. You know, you're born a woman, you have no choice. You know, but every, every film out there, the woman's there, she's under a love interest, or she's fainting, or she's screaming, or she's being protected. These women protect themselves, yeah. you know? And I just love that. I just, I just love that. I think they would just continue to to sort of go on like they were, you know, dominating the, the outlands, dominating yeah. it, and.